Because if they're going to do it to your face, they, bruh, they've been doing it behind your back. You know, I didn't mean that. Let me tell you about, no one should ever feel too comfortable with disrespecting you. But for me, generally, they're just loud. They're just really, really loud and obnoxious. Oh, ah, ah, yo, ah, yo, ah, yo. Oh, who really? Rega fella, kiri Bluetooth mic. La rebula isa, la rebula isa, la rata. Yo. So what do you do? I'm an entrepreneur. What do you do? I'm an entrepreneur. What do you do? I'm an entrepreneur. What of what? Of what? Discopasi. Judging, defeating, boom, boom, the blah, 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 leave and shouting and all of that. I was like, ma'am, conduct yourself. No, no, several seats. And then, Chigi Chigi, your lifestyle has now elevated 1000% since you've been dating this politician. Please. <laughs> Please, man. Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of my take on controversial trending topics. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's get into right, it. Okay. The next one I was asked to speak about is the ultimatum South Africa. Now, I've done a couple of TikToks about this. If you're not following me on TikTok, please do, because I tend to be more on TikTok now than I am on my Instagram because I just... I just really have a love-hate relationship with Instagram. I don't like it much uh, these days, except to just put up content and, and get the step, okay? But on TikTok, I did speak, I did a couple of TikToks about the Ultimatum South Africa. Let's get into it. So, the Ultimatum South Africa dropped a couple of months, uh, maybe let's say about a month ago, a little over a month ago at this point, and I watched it in one sitting. I typically do not watch shows like this. But Love is Blind, Ultimatum, Love Island, eh, What What Tropica. Hey, I don't watch these shows. I genuinely just don't. But for some reason, when it came up, I was sitting, I watched it on the day that it dropped and I was sitting at home and I was just like, you know what? I've got nothing to do. I have my drink. I think it was a Friday evening. And I said, nah, let me give it a try. Let me watch one episode and let's see. I watched it all in one sitting. <laughs> So if you do not know what the ultimatum is about, it's couples who come onto the show where one part of the couple has issued the other uh, person in the relationship, I can't speak, has issued the other person in the relationship an ultimatum. Either you marry me, we move forward with this relationship, we commit or we walk away, right? But they come into this with other couples and while they're there they go into the social experiment where the couples are swapped and switched around for three weeks you get to live with somebody else from another couple while you kind of figure out this whole you know thing between you and your relationship and then the three weeks after that you switch back to your partner and you, they take it from there basically in a nutshell that's what it's about it's meant to test the relationship it's a social experiment it's meant to test the relationship it's meant to you know um help the couple with the difficult decisions or confront the things that are going on in the relationships and man oh man did south africa take the cup with this particular series so i absolutely loved it i loved it i ate it up there are so many opinions that i have about many members of the uh, show that went on to the show. I loved how it was shot. I feel like the videography, cinematography, the host Salamina and her husband, I love them. I thought they were great for the show. I really do think they were great for the show. I did watch the reunion as well. And um, to speak on the show, it was filled with a lot of drama because I was asked to speak about Kanya. So we're going to get into that as well. But it was filled with a lot of drama. I loved it. I think it was a great way. It was quite eye-opening to see how you know, other relationship dynamics work. Uh, there's a couple that Courtney and Aiden, I, I just, I wasn't quite sure, you know. I think it was just a, a, a diversity sprinkle sprinkle you know but there are certain things that i just felt like maybe they were just not 
they were there, but they were not really there for me. Of course, we had Kanye and Kateko, and wow, lots to say about that one. As I record this video now, Kanye and Kateko are no longer together, but they did stay together after the filming of the first part of the, the Ultimatum, which was about a year ago. And at the reunion, they were still together. But Kateko has been saying on social media that he's no longer with Kanye. Good for him. Because both of them needed a lot of help. They needed a lot of therapy. They needed a lot of assistance. Kanye is just vile. I, I don't, I can't reconcile in my brain that they could be somebody who behaves that way. And when Ruth called her to check, I was like, check mate. Okay, not every woman is going to be accepting of you and this behavior that you have and how you speak down and talk down to people. Yes. Towards other people, the body shaming, the, the just, just blatant A-B-U-S-E. So what do you do? I'm an entrepreneur. What do you do? I'm an entrepreneur. What do you do? I'm an entrepreneur. What of what? Of what? Discopasi. The blatant abuse, the blatant body shaming, the blatant disrespect. And you know, when the promise ring came out <laughs> and then she was told that it, it's not an engagement ring, it's a promise ring. And she was like, I like this, take this off. Ah, eh, man. Ah, eh, man. Tung, ah, eh, man. Ah, eh. I, 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 I. She's just really, truly a vile human being. And that's not a word that I use very lightly. It takes a lot for me to say that word out loud. But more than anything, I just felt sorry for her. I felt like she needed a lot of help. I think she needed to speak to some people. And, uh, uh, and some of the things that came out about her afterwards was just truly, really frightening. So as I was saying, yeah, so she was quite horrible. And Nkateko kind of disappointed me because when he started in the first episode two three i was like okay he seems like somebody who's quite in tune and emotionally aware and he wants to really get the best out of this and uh no what he ended up doing to caesar as well when he, he literally threw caesar in the lion's den by taking caesar to go confront kanya that was unacceptable especially knowing what kind of girlfriend that he has. Um, then I, there was Isaac and Ruth who I loved. I absolutely loved them so much because um, <laughs> I didn't quite love Isaac, but I loved Ruth. I loved the dynamic of the relationship. I was quite surprised that two years being together and I, Ruth had, hadn't met Isaac's family. hadn't met Isaac's friends, but uh, within two days of Isaac being paired up with Kanya, he was already introducing Kanya to his family and his friends, which was shocking for me. Um, I loved how Ruth stands on business. You know, she didn't regret what she did with Nola. You'd have to watch it if you haven't already. It's on Netflix. She didn't regret what she did with him. She regretted hurting Isaac's feelings. And that's somebody who is honest and forthcoming with themselves and stands on business. And I liked that. Then we have South Africa's Playboy. Nola and Lebu, the sweetheart that uh, he was with. Just such, I felt, I just felt sad for Lebu the whole time, seeing what Nola and Ruth were doing and all of this. And uh, I, I just don't like Nola. Yeah, in a nutshell. Then we had Genesis and Tabby and I loved them so much. I felt Genesis for his age. They were the couple that were together the longest, uh, seven years. Genesis for his age, I felt was very mature. The way he, you know, in hindsight, how he would sit back, analyze and think things through and speak on things and how he behaved when he spoke to Nola at the reunion behind the scenes and all of this. And we could hear what they were saying. I found Genesis to be quite mature for his age. I really liked how he, you know, he tried to get Courtney out of her shell. She didn't, you know, but, um, he was there for the experiment and he was, he was present for it. And I liked it. And I liked how, you know, he explained at the reunion that, you know, things like this take time. Still, I feel like seven years is a very long time. 
I did disagree with him on that aspect. Seven years is a very, very long time. If you want to marry someone, you should know by maybe year one, two, sharp. If this is somebody you want to spend the rest of your life with, seven years is a very long time. And uh, can you talk about friends who get too comfortable and end up saying things that they shouldn't be saying? Let me tell you something. When you've been friends with people for a really long time, yes, friendships can get to that point where friends get too comfortable and they say things and they hurt you all in the, you know, oh no, I was, uh, no, you know, I didn't mean that. You know, I didn't mean that. Let me tell you about, no one should ever feel too comfortable with disrespecting you. Then you can, it makes sense. Or saying horrible things uh, about you to others or to you, to yourself, or about, you know, degrading you or speaking down towards you. If somebody is going to speak down towards you to your face, trust and believe they're doing it behind your back. Keep saying that. That's great. Keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Keep saying it out loud. You hear my chats. If you trust and believe they're going to do it behind your back. No one should ever feel or get too comfortable with disrespecting you. Never. Never. If you can see that this person is never really in support of you, this person is never really in support of your friendship or your endeavors or compliments you or um, looks at you and thinks, wow, friend, you know, they, they should be your best wingman. They should be your wingman. But half the time they're just saying horrible things. They get too comfortable and they say things, especially in front of people that they shouldn't be saying those things in front of. That's not right. But you hear my chat. Then that's a problem. That's a major, major red flag. No one, no partner, no family member, no friend, no one should ever get too comfortable to such a point where they would disrespect you. Because if they're going to do it to your face, they, bruh, they've been doing it behind your back. That's facts. Can you please talk about the Bluetooth mics? Oh my God. Una, 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 it's time for school, wake up, una, wake up, wake up, wake up. I'll put up some clips so that you guys can watch this. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here, but I genuinely, oh my God, I can't stand them personally for me, personally for me. Do my family members love them? Yes. My friends, they love them. So these are these Bluetooth mics that are so loud and just, and, and people are buying them. And Mr. Price, I believe was selling them for like 90 bucks and um, they were fully out of stock. And they said that they do not plan, plan on restocking them. And now people are looking for all these other places. They're buying them on take a lot. They're buying them at macro. They're buying, buying, buying these mics. And I, I feel like um, <laughs> they're great for entertainment, for karaoke and whatever. I did get a little bit concerned when I started seeing people driving. You cannot be driving like this. Tina, we are in a hurry. Yes, you. It's always people in the queen. It's quid, guys. It's always quid. And actually, you know, talking to the car in front of them like, oh, you're in the fast lane. Get out of the fast lane. That could cause an accident. 
that's something that could potentially be very dangerous to do. So no, that's not cool, man. That's not cool. If you're cracking a joke and you're waking your friend up, wake up or whatever, that's fine. You know, it's it's fine. It's it's the purpose of of the mic, right? But then when you're going to then bring the mic to your workplace and start no, no. Like as much as I'm all for jokes and and living light and laughing light and all of this and I'm all about that. Definitely, I'm all about that. But no, no. I genuinely think that sometimes let's know where to draw the line. But for me, generally, they're just loud. They're just really, really loud and obnoxious. And hey, it's a lot, man. I laugh at the TikToks because they're hilarious. But except the ones that are dangerous with people driving and all of that and asking the person in front of you to get out of the road or whatever, no, no, you could cause a serious accident with that kind of thing. Um, no, no, you know? So there's certain instances where it just works and there's certain instances where it doesn't. If you're having karaoke night, games night with your friends, definitely do the absolute most. I think they're fantastic. They're loud, but I think they're fantastic. But yo, ah, 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 yo, ah, yo, ah, yo, ah, yo, ah, yo, ah, yo, ah, <laughs> but they are they're awesome <laughs> they're awesome but just in certain situations there's there's certain moments where they work and there's certain moments where they don't facts um can you talk about the baddie lifestyle being associated with politicians so this one, I think, comes off of the back of uh, TikTok that went or uh, Instagram reel that went uh, viral or that people were talking about it where they, they, it was um, a reel of Edwin Sodi and Lebuhang Mailes. These are politicians in the country one is a politician the other one is connected to politicians uh where their girlfriends were pretty much traveling the world and chowing down let me tell you it was luxury brand after luxury brand it was fancy hotels branded clothing uh uh, uh, uh flying on jets okay they were g6ing this okay it was this that and the other uh can't say i'm surprised a lot of the baddies that live the lifestyle that they live, particular to this country, I'm not going to speak on other countries, a lot of them have been associated with politicians. Politicians that are old enough to be their dads, politicians that are old enough to be their granddads in some cases. A lot of them have been associated with them because you can't just move from being somebody, oi, drive along, your nice little car that gets you from A to B to now somebody that drives a Porsche and we, we're not it's not corroborating it's not we're, we're, one and one it's not twoing you know one and one is threeing it's fouring and of course people are going to try and find out people are going to be detectives and fbis and be like no then the stories are going to come out that oh she was dating this politician or she was whatever whatever so you know it's transactional um it's all financial transactional relationships i don't think any of it a lot of the time has to do with love <laughs> yeah. truly my personal opinion um you want to drag me for it um that's my personal opinion you want to drag me for it be my guest it's fine it's not gonna this it's not gonna do much for me <laughs> um but uh yeah, I can't say I'm surprised. I can't say I'm surprised. What I, I will say is that it's infuriating to see things like this because all these nice times and these lifestyles and all of this come at the backs of taxpayers' monies. So it's the money that you are paying into tax, into the government, into the, the, the economy, and you're having people up there and they are funding the lifestyles of their baddie girlfriends with the money of taxpayers and nothing like that 
will infuriate me more. It's infuriating. That's why I do not follow content like that or follow um, women who create that kind of content because it's infuriating when you can't quite place how you are making the kind of money to support that kind of lifestyle. Whether they, yes, it's your boyfriend and they're doing it for you, that's fine. But your boyfriend is connected to politically embezzling money and taxpayers' monies and all of that. So unfortunately, guilty by association. I'm not going to then say, oh, but it's her relationship, whatever. No, you know how that money is coming about. It's like the KPMG situation. You know, the guy KPMG, it's a very similar and he got her girlfriend a Range Rover a Velar, and they were traveling the world and doing all these things at taxpayers' money's expenses. This is money from KPMG that was supposed to be disseminated for bursaries. And he stole this money and he chowed it so that he could give his girlfriend a good life. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. There's nothing about it for me that is pleasant to see like, ooh, Marie, let them live there. No, I will never condone that. Me here on this channel, I will never condone that. Especially when we know how you are acquiring those kinds of things. If you are working for your stuff and we can see the work that you are doing, may please, I'm the, I will be the first one to say yes, so deserving. You are working hard, child. You're making that money. But when we know who, before you dated these people, Ololi, Justin, Jay, Pedi, Oitamela, and Wapara, and going to nice places and whatever, and then Chigi Chigi, your lifestyle has now elevated 1,000% since you've been dating this politician? Please. <laughs> Please, man. I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of my take on controversial trending topics. If you did, please like the video, watch the ads, subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like more bonus content, definitely join the membership space. The link is in the description down below. I'm going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I need to jump into a meeting at one o'clock, chill, in the next 10 minutes. So I'm going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Until then, sayonara.